Hi everyone, thanks for checking out this video. Um, so for a little over a year now, I've been making these like tutorial videos for you guys about um, bioinformatics and computational biology, kind of going over how to write like certain kinds of programs and do like certain kinds of analyses and things like that. But it occurred to me that I've never actually made like an introduction video explaining um, what these topics are in like a general sense. So that's what I'm gonna try to do with this video, kind of give like a uh, introduction to the field and talk about um, bioinformatics and computational biology in kind of like a broad general sense to give an overview and kind of like an introduction to these fields for anyone who's uh, new to them. So before we can really understand like the purpose of um, these fields and like what is meant by bioinformatics and computational biology, I need to tell you guys a bit about um, like modern biology experiments. Uh, so with, with technology these days, a lot of biology experiments um, involve what's called high throughput sequencing. And so basically what that means is that um, high, high throughput sequencing is just like an experiment that sequences a large amount of genetic um, material, meaning RNA or DNA. So an example of this is an experiment called RNA-seq. Um, so basically RNA-seq is a way of quantifying uh, quantifying like the the amount of RNA transcripts um, in uh, in a cell or really I should say like in each cell in a population. And so this is like one example of a um, high throughput sequencing experiment. But all these experiments present us with the same challenge in that they produce a, a really large amount of raw data. Like you're really left with like a, a ton of raw data. So for example, you might have like um, you might have data on the amount of RNA for like 25,000 or so genes across like hundreds of samples. Um, and then the challenge is like, what do you do with all that raw data to be able to actually like gain insight into the biological system you're studying? So that's really like um, a, a non-trivial challenge that can be quite difficult um, to try to just use all this um, like huge amount of raw data to be able to draw some kind of like biological conclusion and learn something actually about the system that you're studying. So I kind of put this diagram as an example of like one kind of bioinformatics challenge I'm working on, which is called network inference. So in network inference, you have um, transcriptomic data about the expression levels of uh, a bunch of different genes across a bunch of different samples. And the goal is to figure out how to take that data and infer the structure of the underlying um, gene regulatory network that produced it. So that'll be one example of like an unsolved um, ongoing challenge in uh, bioinformatics and computational biology is like learning about the underlying system of this gene regulatory network uh, from data that you get from a high throughput uh, sequencing experiment. So yeah, th this is kind of where bioinformatics and computational biology come in. They're basically, um, they're basically like a field of study where the goal is to take this huge amount of raw data that we're getting from uh, modern biology experiments and draw actual insights from that data. And so um, the terms bio bioinformatics and computational biology are um, like mostly used interchangeably. Um, so don't get too hung up on the differences between the terms because a lot of people just use them intercha interchangeably to mean the same thing. But they do have um, slightly different connotations, which I'm gonna cover in the next, uh, the next couple slides after this. And um, both of them are very interdisciplinary. So they, they include biology, uh, math, statistics, computer science, and data science. So they're very interdisciplinary. And these terms are also related to like other terms you might hear like systems biology, uh, quantitative biology, mathematical biology. And yeah, like these all have like slightly different connotations, but they're all like kind of also the same thing. So all of these things are basically, they're basically dealing with like quantitative problems and like uh, math modeling and like data analysis problems in biology. So they, they all kind of mean that even though they have like slightly different connotations. Uh, but yeah, like I said, like don't get too hung up on the differences between the terms, um, but they do have like slightly different connotations. So I'll talk a bit about that now. So bioinformatics, um, a lot of the times will, um, it'll be used to describe like a genome sequence analysis. So if you have like a sequence of DNA, um, and you want to analyze like a, uh, a mutation or something, or to just get like the, the mutation profile of say like a, a tumor sequence of DNA versus like a healthy cell sequence of DNA. That's something that would fall under the umbrella of like bioinformatics, like the actual sequence analysis part of it. 
Also, software development. If you hear people talking about like actually developing software, that usually will be called bioinformatics more so than computational biology. Um, also, text mining. This is like a, a popular topic now. Is how to um, how to use natural language processing to mine uh, the text of research papers and like draw draw out conclusions from them. Um, yeah, that's usually called bioinformatics. And also, like I kind of said in general, like processing raw data. Like if you have like the very like raw output of a uh, of a sequencing experiment and you need to convert it into something um, like usable to be analyzed, the early stages of the processing of that raw data would be called um, bioinformatics. And I put and more too because this is of course like not a comprehensive list. There's there's obviously like a ton more things that uh, fall under this wide umbrella of bioinformatics. But yeah, there's like a couple examples. And then um, computational biology. Um, Again, like, don't get too hung up on the uh, differences between the terms because they're used, like, so interchangeably. But I would say, like, computational biology has somewhat of um, a connotation of being more, like, mathematical than bioinformatics um, in terms of, like, working with, like, math models. So, for example, if you're, like, analyzing, like, a differential equation model, like the one I put here, this uh, model of gene expression I covered in um, a previous video... If you're working with like a differential equation model and like trying to work out the steady states like on a piece of paper or something, that's more computational biology rather than bioinformatics. Um, also stochastic modeling, that's what my lab does a lot of. Um, machine learning, that might be called bioinformatics too. I, I usually hear that called more computational biology. And then I also put like high level data analysis. So like I said, like the, the early level... Um, data processing a lot of times would be called bioinformatics, but when you're getting to like the higher level data analysis, that might be called um, computational biology. But again, like, I mean, it's, they're pretty interchangeable too. So again, don't get too caught up on, uh, on this stuff. And then, so I, I thought I'd finish out this like brief introduction, um, talking about some like possible careers in this field. So if you're looking for like a meaningful career, there is a lot of um, really great choices that you could that you could get with like a background in um, bioinformatics and computational biology. So of course, like maybe the most obvious one is just like basic science research. Like you could be doing just like fun, fundamental um, like cell biology research or like microbiology, um, systems biology, th things like that. Just working in like an academic lab. Um, you may also want to go into like a clinical or medical like research setting. Um, so for example, you see a lot of like job postings for bioinformatics analysts at like hospitals, for example, working directly with like patient data, working on like clinical trials, um, things like that. And then another possible choice is um, drug development. So if you want to work on like inventing new medicines um, or things like that, like work, maybe inventing like a new vaccine or something or a new um, cancer drug or something like that, there's a lot of really good um, careers for uh, bioinformatics people and computational biologists in, in that field. And then there's also some like non-obvious choices that you can go into with this kind of a background too. So I thought I'd go over some of these too. Like obviously the uh, the basic science research and like the medical um, medical and like translational research are the ones that kind of come to mind first. But these are some like non-obvious choices. So one is agriculture. So in my um, grad school program, uh, the school I'm going to actually has like um, a pretty serious agricultural program. Like they actually have their own. The school like has its own farm. It's like a, an actual like operational farm that people like learn how to do farming on, but also do like scientific research on. So a lot of the other um, PhD students in my program focus on like agricultural research, like dealing with like um, chicken genomes and like genomes of like crops and things like that. So that's something that's pretty cool going into like uh, agricultural research. That could be something cool and like meaningful to uh, pursue as a career. Um, another one is forensic science. So these days, the way they catch a lot of people like uh, murderers and, you know, like serial killers, stuff like that, um, is actually by collecting DNA evidence and then like matching it to um, a suspect. So that could be something cool to go into um, if you have like a bond match background is like actually like catching some serial killers or something like that. Also ecology. So um, if you're interested in like uh, kind of environmental science and ecology, and stuff like that. Um, there's a lot you can do with bioinformatics. So, for example, like um, a lot of like microbiome studies are related to um, ecology. So, a lot of people will do research where they'll take um, they'll take samples out of 
out of like the environment, like maybe a soil sample or like a, a water sample from a lake or something. And they'll, um, they'll analyze uh, the microbiome um, of that sample using bioinformatics techniques to like sequence all of the genome data in that sample and try to, to see what kinds of like bacteria and like viruses and stuff uh, are in there. So that can be something kind of cool. Also bio biosecurity. So dealing with like um, the threats of like pandemics and stuff like that, obviously a very timely possible career choice. And then the last one I put, possibly the most like random one, but something I've been interested in lately is um, this new thing of like cell-based meat, like trying to make um, meat from like cells so that there's no uh, animal involved. So that's something that people are trying to work on to, for, for one thing, it would like reduce um, harm to animals that's caused by like factory farming and stuff like that. And it would also like uh, be a way of mitigating climate change because you wouldn't have the uh, carbon emissions associated with like industrial, um, uh, like livestock agriculture. So people are trying to like develop uh, cell-based meat to like deal with these challenges, but they're trying to have it taste like, like real meat. Um, so that people will be like, okay, eating it and it won't taste like tofu or something. So I just put that, I mean, that's something that like, I've seen a couple of job postings recently for, um, bioinformatics people in this like cell based meat field, uh, these new companies, they're, they're popping up. So, uh, that's, that's another idea. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this is just kind of like a brief introduction to this field for you guys. Um, if anyone has any questions, just, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll try to answer them. And yeah, so, uh, thanks for watching and see you next time.